five minutes for questions. Uh, thank you, uh, Chair Latta and Ranking Member Matsui for holding this hearing today. And I want to also thank the witnesses for testifying before this committee. Uh, hearing some very harsh language from the other side of the aisle, uh, perhaps if we prioritized our spending, we wouldn't be worried about whether or not we get the money. Uh, but all I know is rampant 1.9 trillion COVID spending at the beginning of this uh, Biden-Harris administration led to rampant inflation, which has led to 20% cost increases and has read, led to record high interest rates, which are really challenging everybody. Uh, and having grown up in a very humble family, having to decide whether or not I could afford food or something else, uh, very necessary, I know those challenges. Um, Commissioner Carr, in your testimony, you stated that the BEAD initiative is the slowest moving federal broad broadband deployment program in recent history, specifically, $42 billion program, 967 days since it was signed into law, not one person, home, or business has been connected to the internet with these dollars. No construction projects will even start, according uh, to the president, until 2025 and many in 2026. Can you explain how the Biden-Harris administration's decision to add additional red tape is causing unnecessary delays and jeopardizing the program? Thank you for the question. I'll start as well with your point about ACP and spending. Look, the FCC did its own survey, and it found that of this $17 billion, only 15% of people said that they would lose internet service if the program expired. So I think as people in Congress focus on ACP, let's focus on the 15% or whatever number really needs it, rather than simply pouring more money into that existing program in its current form. With respect to BEAD, $42 billion and a promise to connect millions of Americans and 967 days later, not even a shovel worth of dirt has been turned. Some people have said we should measure that program by its intention to connect millions of Americans. I think we should uh, measure it based on its results. And right now it's off the rails. We are looking at DEI requirements, climate change requirements, price controls. Right now the Biden administration is going back and forth with Virginia that wants the money to move forward saying, you didn't put enough of a thumb on the scale for a price control, please rewrite it this way. The same thing with Tennessee. So rather than staying laser focused on just getting Americans across the digital divide, we're wasting time on things that have nothing to do with connecting them. Um, do you think the program will be a success, more importantly? As, and then how do we define success? To me, it should be defined by the number of households uh, the number of businesses that have been connected. I think BEAD is a program that's worth fighting for, but it needs a course correction. We can still do it. Let's stop trying to pursue DEI and just bridge the digital divide. Let's stop pushing these climate change agendas and just connect communities. If we can do those things and get rid of the extraneous political improvising, I think this program will get closer to getting back on track. Uh, Commissioner uh, Simington, you indicated in your testimony that the Universal Service Fund is an urgent need of reform. How would you reform the USF, both in terms of distribution and contributions? Absolutely. So um, the Universal Service Fund, uh, of course, dates back to the Telecommunications Act of 96 at a time when the landline market was a lot bigger than it is now. Thus, on the, on the front end of contributions, it's very difficult to fund a growing program out of a shrinking base. Now, if you look at what the landline network was supposed to do, Universal Service says it was supposed to connect all Americans in a single network. In fact, it was to be a, a network that was intercompatible with all the networks worldwide. And so th thus, it benefited from the network effects of scale. Today, the beneficiaries of the network effects of scale are online companies primarily. So to put it another way, when Comcast gains a customer, it's not just Comcast. It's Google. It's, uh, it's Meta. It's Amazon. These are the companies that benefit even more from universal connectivity than individual network operators who do not have the same advantages of scale. So how would you change that? Uh, well, I think uh, con by contribution reform, we would say that the main beneficiaries of these network effects should be considered as contributors. Uh, thank you. And uh, lastly, more of a comment, because I think this question has been asked and answered. But in agricultural heavy states like Iowa, the advancement of present Precision agriculture is essential for our farmers to remain competitive and efficient. Widespread and ubiquitous, either broadband or wireless coverage, and I have been in the combine with farmers who are using or use Starlink. I have visited with our manufacturers as well. It is really important for the adoption and implementation of precision agriculture technologies, which would meet uh, some of those uh, sustainability goals uh, that you're trying to implement. 
Uh, and I would just encourage the FCC to expand and enhance wireless availability, as was mentioned earlier, to meet the growing demands, but also to ensure that the BEAD program is put in place and enacted and let the providers get to do the work that they do because they are extraordinarily frustrated uh, in my state. Uh, and then a question for the record, uh, Chairman uh, Rosenworcel, answer question for the record. I uh, would just like to ask what the FCC's role is in spectrum studies that NTIA is leading. With that, I yield back. Thank you. The gentlelady yields back. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Florida's 9th District. Five minutes for questions. Thank you, Chairman. We live in a 